morning everybody. Today I'm coming to you from my bedroom because my toddler would not leave me alone. <laughs> I really want to do this video today though because it's been a while since I've gotten to film. Uh, I've been playing some of the ones that I had pre-filmed and I just have been having a really rough time with figuring out what to even say. I've just been feeling like my brain's been pulled in a million different directions. A lot of personal projects going on. I, I've got a baby shower on Saturday that I'm going to that I've been working on a quilt for. I'm still working on my John Steinbeck quilt. I've been having a hard time getting into some of my books that I'm reading. Uh, also been paying attention to all the news, which is just exhausting me and my kids got me introduced to a new game which I'm not going to tell you the name of because it will suck your brain in and destroy you but it is like a word letter game and it's been great for them practicing their spelling but uh, I just constantly have letters floating in my head now so that said it's been kind of hard for me to figure out what to even say that's important and so I just want to talk to you a little bit about some of the things that I've been trying to work on personally and share with you some books like some cookbooks that I think are going to help with that um, some of them that I haven't gotten to use in a while just because I've been so rattled I feel like my brain's been so discombobulated lately uh, I don't know I think it's probably the great weather in February <laughs> it doesn't make any sense uh, nothing seems to make sense these days and so I've just been having a really hard time focusing my brain on what what's essential and what's not. And part of my word of the year focus is to figure out what do I need in my life and what do I not need in my life? What is adding to me? What is taking away? And food is a big one that I'm trying to figure out. If you are anything like me, you, well, I'll just tell you who I am and you can decide for yourself. Uh, I'm a busy mom who has never had it easy with food. Uh, I love food so much. Food is my comfort. Food is what I do when I get bored sometimes. And yeah, I, I think I'm actually a pretty decent cook. My husband's a great cook. And so it's been important to us, but I hate restricting myself. I hate labels on things. I hate keeping track of stuff just for the sake of keeping track of it. However, I'm going to be 34 in a few weeks and I know that I need to take care of myself and it's hard especially when I know I have kids looking at what I'm doing uh, my toddler loves sugar and we don't even have that much around uh, my husband's type 1 diabetic so we keep track of that kind of thing um, but I, I want her to have healthy attitudes about food so I've been trying to kind of evaluate what my problem areas are and how I can fix them. And so I'll share with you a few things that I've done in the past that have worked and some, hopefully some tips that'll help you as well as some cookbooks. Uh, yeah. And I'll just kind of talk with you about what I'm also trying to work on doing better. For me, planning is essential. I have so much decision fatigue. Uh, you know, what What do you call your congressperson about? Which book should I read next? What are we doing in our homeschool tomorrow? What, uh, what do I need to wear today? What do I need to do for the kids? And there's just so many decisions. Even just going to the grocery store is exhausting. One of my favorite things about traveling is just the lack of choices in stores because you're not feeling just overwhelmed looking around and you're, you just get so tired. So planning is something that I think is essential when you're trying to make better eating choices. A lot of times I've just made a list of these are the things I have ingredients for, choose from that list because I hate just restricting myself to on Tuesday you will have this and on Wednesday you'll have this because I'm generally not in the mood for whatever I said I was going to do. One exception is Taco Tuesday at our house. Now I think I've said before my husband's a vegetarian. He's been a vegetarian for a very long time. I think over 27, 28 years now. And so we don't have a lot of, of meat around. So ground beef chicken, while we might have some of that stuff, sometimes for me and the kids, we do a lot of bean tacos. We put sweet potatoes in or carrots or whatever vegetables we have. Last night we had uh, beans with squash and Brussels sprouts that we'd roasted before. That was actually really good. Um, there's some really amazing taco recipes that have nothing to do with meat. So that's kind of fun. I do have to be a little more, more careful about how much sour cream I put on stuff. 
but planning meals ahead of time. Sometimes uh, for a while we were just doing Wednesday was Indian night, Tuesdays was Taco Tuesday, and I think it was just great to not have to think ahead of time. I know I need to have beans thawed or frozen, no, unfrozen or cooked, and that's just, that was all I needed to know. The one thing I hadn't done, which I'm starting to do, is plan for snacks. Now, this is a big one because if I don't have a snack option available, I will make myself one. I used to have baked potatoes as an after school snack <laughs> uh, in high school and it was just so good. But you can't do that. You can't sustain yourself on that. And so planning some high protein snacks to have around or some vegetables to have around is a huge, huge thing. So we got some hummus dip already available and nuts of different varieties, as well as, I know one of my friends, she'll hard boil a bunch of eggs or even just cook some chicken breast so she can snack on one of those. I don't know if I'm probably ever going to get to the point where I can just pick up a cooked chicken breast and eat it. But I did make some granola bars um, that I nibbled out of the fridge last week, which was just so good. It was a little bit of sweet and a little bit of salty and it was just great with steel cut oats. So planning snacks is super important. The other thing I do want to tell you about is having water available all the time. Now this right here is my favorite water cup. And this is just actually, it's a very large mug. I have used it for hot chocolate once. My husband told me I shouldn't have done it and I probably shouldn't have. It was way too much sugar. That tells you how much like I just do whatever I want. I don't but I've started using it as my water cup and one of my best friends gave it to me. It says like it's all good on it and just so sunny and cheerful, but just get the biggest cup that you have and keep it full of water. And then whenever you see it, drink as much as you can out of it. That's been super helpful for me to just remember to have water around all the time. I've been using my fitness pal app to kind of keep track of snacks and food and water and some exercise just this past week. And that's been kind of cool to see what I am and not eating. And when I'm having to write it down, I choose not to indulge myself in as much because I know I have to write it down. That's helped a little bit. Another thing just for con cost conscious, con cost to be con conscientious of cost. <laughs> hard to say all together is to have, you know, get your, your dried beans. They're very, very affordable and then cook them in the crock pot on in like mass and then freeze them. Then all you have to do is thaw them out when you're ready to have them. I use beans for so many things. We use them for tacos, for veggie burgers, for hummus, for Indian food, um, sometimes for casserole. A lot of times if something cause, calls for chicken in it, I will just substitute chickpeas if it's a casserole because it's a little bit of the same kind of chewy texture without all of the meat, if that's something that you're concerned about. Uh, yeah, we have some great veggie burger options. My favorite one I will link below and I use red quinoa and, and uh, white beans or whatever beans I have, but generally like a northern bean. And that makes the best veggie burger. The red quinoa has a little bit of a uh, meatier flavor to it. Sometimes I'll put in a little bit of barbecue sauce. Uh, yeah, to give a little bit more smokiness, some vegetarian Worcestershire to add a little bit of flavor. And that's just phenomenal. I, my favorite thing to do is to put a poached egg on the top of that. But yeah, dried beans you can use for so much. I've actually I made several vegetarian meatballs for spaghetti meatballs. So yeah, quinoa and beans, keep them on hand. Another thing that I really wanted to show you, which I have been doing, gosh, probably close to nine years now, is making my own vegetable stock. Now, you could do this if you have chicken stock or beef stock or any of that stuff, but I do it with vegetables because it's vegetarian. And the this is just like my favorite cheapo trick ever. And we thrive on soups during the winter. Now this winter has been kind of, wackadoodle where we haven't needed to have the warm, comfy, cozy food lately, but we do it with risottos as well. So if you get like the vegetarian stocks from the store, they, they run about $5 for a thing. That is crazy. So <laughs> that's a lot of money when you start thinking about it. So vegetable stock is the easiest thing to make. And if you have chicken stock, you know, throw in extra chickens. What you, extra chickens, like you have extra chickens. 
any chicken bits that you have. So what I do is I keep a gallon Ziploc bag in the freezer. And whenever I, let's see, in, in here there's some acorn squash skin, there's, there's some potato peels, there's some celery ends, some onions, some spinach that was getting kind of iffy. It was, it was fine, but I wasn't going to get to it because we're going out of, out of town for the weekend. Um, potatoes, you peel all the stuff and I just throw it in this gallon bag. Then I put it in a large stock pot with, we like to put a little bit of wine in there, some salt, pepper, maybe a bay leaf or so, some parsley if you have it. And then I just cook that down. And then I drain out all of the vegetable peels and then do another round. You could probably get, I would say two to three rounds out of one Ziploc bag full of vegetables. Then you put it in glass jars or whatever else you want to seal it up and put it in the freezer to have whenever you need it. That alone, and it's food that you are going to compost or throw out anyway. It's free. <laughs> like that's basically free stock. Uh, minus if you put in wine, like that is all you need to have vegetable stock available to you at all times. That is my favorite money saver, everything. Like you can make sauces out of these with the vegetable stock. There's so much you can do with vegetable stock, but that is a great way to save money while eating. Yeah. Healthy. So the other thing I like to do is make marinara in bulk. And I do that as well. Cause I can use marinara for tortilla pizzas or regular pizzas uh, eggplant Parmesan. I'll do different stacks of, uh, eggplant. Um, yeah. So marinara can work for a lot of different things. You can do dipping sauces for veggie balls, any kinds of things. So whenever you're making things make it in bulk, so you have it available. You don't have to use the stuff from the store. It's really not too hard to find a recipe you like and use it. My husband and I start when we went to Italy, Oh gosh, about five years ago now, maybe six years ago, uh, we started making our own marinara sauce and we have not looked back. And the times that I've broken down and had to get it for something, it's just not as good. So yeah, it's pretty simple and it's a lot cheaper to make it yourself. The other trick I wanted to show you before I show you the cookbooks, greens in a jar. I think a lot of people have seen the salads in a jar. I'm not really traveling all the time. Uh, we eat lunch at home, but this actually does keep your greens a lot fresher. I got a huge batch of different assorted greens, spinach and the like from the grocery store a couple weeks ago and just took them home, washed them and cut them up, put them in glass jars. Some of them, like this one's an old pickle jar and put it in the fridge and they stayed fresh for, yeah, about 10 to 11 days. Uh, as I slowly went, went through it and it was awesome because I knew if I'm seeing it in the fridge all the time, I'm more likely to have a salad than if I haven't planned on it or if I have to wash all the stuff or cut it up. This was easy. I just dumped it in. I put it some in vegetables. I put some in like a tor like a Spanish tortilla with like some eggs and potatoes. There's so many, it's had it for tacos, so many different things you can do with that. You can use them in your smoothies, but yes plan to have that stuff available to you because otherwise you're just not going to. Now before <laughs> the video is getting a little bit long and I'm really sorry, I did want to show you a few of my favorite vegetarian cookbooks. So America's Test Kitchen, they do a TV show and they have several other cookbooks. Uh, we have the baking one and the family one. This one right here is phenomenal. They have great, um, like product reviews of different items. They have everything like pictures is all organized. Very simple. If you don't know anything about cooking at all, this is a great one as are any of theirs. They don't make mistakes is what I tell people. Another one that I love is the love and lemons cookbook. She does a great job of showing you just a few things to have in your pantry all the time and what you can do to transform them into different things. I appreciate that, especially when you're trying to save money and you have, you want to get like a good sale on something and you're like, I don't want to have three eggplant Parmesan's in the same day, you know, week or whatever. Although my kids would love it. So this is kind of a cool way to go through and come up with different ideas and they have pretty pictures. So for me, anytime 
cookbooks have beautiful pictures, it inspires me to actually use them as opposed to, there's some that have great recipes, but if you don't have the pictures in them, I'm just not as likely. This one's Rise and Shine, Better Breakfast for Busy Mornings, and my kids went through and marked all the different things they want to try. Uh, so there's a lot of steel cut oats, a lot of whole grains and good proteins in here. And I'm trying to do a better job about actually eating something for breakfast. This one my husband got and it's vegan Mexico. So if you, again, are wanting to try some either taco recipes or empanadas, any of that kind of thing, there's some really fun ones in here that are a little bit more health conscious. This one we use a lot more in the summer. It's called the New Vegetarian Grill. Now, this one does not have pictures, which bums me out, but they have great recipes in here. There's one for a, uh, a peach and kale pizza on the grill, which just, that was really wonderful. So yummy. I loved that one. And this one is kind of the mother, Mark Bittman. <laughs> he has how to cook everything vegetarian, and my husband keeps meaning to go through here and uh, one year and just cook everything out of it. Uh, but this is also very step-by-step. -step. Anything, you just look up uh, an ingredient and come up with different ideas to do with it. So I really appreciate that. So that's kind of what I'm dealing with with food lately. What sorts of things are you doing for your family to eat healthier or more cost-conscious while you're being healthy? I would love to hear that. If you also are a person who struggles with food, please put that in the comments. <laughs> so I feel like I'm not the only one. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, I'll be doing better on my journey towards healthier me, but uh, it's it's overwhelming when you really start to think about having to make big changes. So, little changes, one bit at a time. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, you guys are doing really well, and I will talk to you later. Bye.